Perhaps the steel mill was the answer, an invention of Carlisle Spedding, one of the great names in coal mining history. It was a steel wheel turned against a piece of flint, lighting the workings with a shower of sparks, which were thought to be not hot enough to ignite the fire damp. It was as dangerous as the candle. Even the phosphorescent light of putrefying fish skins, miners were ready to try any extreme. They might as well have worked with no light at all, as indeed they sometimes did. But when explosives were used for blasting coal, and a hand drill was the only tool, a good light was essential. In any case, as the fuse was only a slender hollow stalk filled with powder, a candle was needed to light it. With the blasting of coal came a new hazard, explosive coal dust. Disaster followed disaster. Within two years, 600 men were killed in Tyne and Weir. In 1812, at Felling Colliery, 92 men were killed. Something had to be done. The Sunderland Society was formed for the sole purpose of finding a remedy. It appealed to Sir Humphrey Davy for help. Within a year, he produced a lamp which he and others who believed in it took underground to prove to the miners that it could be used in a fiery pit without igniting the gas. It is, he said, the best thing I ever did. But a magistrate said, I have always been of the opinion that though Davy's lamp was a valuable discovery, it has in practice been much abused, for it has enabled colliers to work where they otherwise ought not. I wish to add, that when it is used, an explosion may be produced by the imprudence of any single individual. The only safety is a perfect ventilation. Fire baskets were the first artificial means of ventilation. They were lowered down a shaft. The fire caused the air to rise in that shaft and to circulate in the workings. These fire baskets later became huge furnaces placed near to the base of the upcast shaft and were in use until the coming of mechanical fans. As the mines became bigger, the working faces only were supplied with a flow of air. But this left large parts of the mine unventilated and they filled up with dangerous pockets of gas. Then, by the use of ventilation doors and brick stoppings, the air was made to circulate throughout the whole mine. At last, the safety of the men who won the coal was slowly catching up with other advances. Below ground, ventilation became better and safety lights were improved. But traveling in the shaft was still terrifying and dangerous. In Scotland, women still climbed over a hundred feet to the surface by ladders. Men descended clinging to ropes like a living chandelier. But guide rails brought greater safety and two shafts became the rule. For the next 50 years, invention followed invention, all adding to safety in the shaft. The 19th century drew to an end with the steam engine still supreme. The old queen died. In 1900, 225 million tons of coal were won by a million workers, although they used their hands and simple tools but they were still working in good seams. Now the good seams were beginning to run out.
Horses were no longer adequate. Steam engines were immobile. And compressed air had seemed to be the only answer. Then, electricity entered the mine, lighting the faces and promising power for...